wasn't until Grant Kenny won the Molokai at 16 years of age uh, and the news of a lot of endurance events happening in South Africa. It wasn't until this time that paddling and ocean paddling in particular didn't start to get a lot more popular. It was one of the reasons that you chose ocean paddling over, say, Ironman or, or surf lifesaving, which you could have done because, you know, you're training with people like Guy Leach, you were class uh, endurance athletes as well. But was it ever a, a matter of thought where you considered the fact that it wasn't maybe overpopulated, the sport at the time, and it was a good opportunity for you to make a, you know, make your presence felt amongst competitors because you were going into a sport which maybe was didn't have the same opportunities and exposure that surf lifesaving had at the time? Yeah, like I, I, I probably would never have been a top Ironman Anyway, I did quite a few of the events. So I, I wasn't a fast enough swimmer, really. And, and the basis of an Ironman race is, is swimming, really. If you're, if you're not a fast enough swimmer, there's no way you'll ever make a good Ironman because it's, it's the leg that, you know, like the bike leg really counts in a triathlon. It's the swim leg that really counts in an um, Ironman event, in a surf Ironman event. So um, I, I hadn't had the swimming background that a lot of the other guys had. You know, I, I never swam as a kid. I only did it for a couple of years when I, in my late teens. And I got reasonable at it, but I never got good at it. So, and it, to make big gains in swimming, you have to do so much work to gain precious seconds. And uh, for me, uh, the, it wasn't something that I wanted to do, you know, building out 10 swimming sessions a week. It's not my sort of thing. So. Uh, the ocean was my attraction. So, um, and yeah, but all the all the top ski paddlers at the time from the surf were all doing whatever ocean races presented themselves. So, the Twenty Beaches started in in 1991, and yep. that was the first big race in Australia that sort of gained a bit of traction, and it's still going today. It's run by a, a fantastic group of people um, that that put that together now, and. Um, yeah, so, and and obviously the support from Shore and Partners over the last few years has really boosted that and then the other parts of the sport as well. I understand you throughout the 80s, though, were very uh, strong um, in your performances in Ironman um, and that really hooked you. Uh, you went to every event since, the, like the Molokai Ironman, the first event. Uh, you won all the events Throughout the 90s, pretty much, you were very dominant there. So the 90s, going on to break some records there. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and the Molokai to Oahu? Yeah, so I started doing that in in, in 1999, uh, 1989. And then, obviously, I, I kept going there for a long time afterwards. So through the 90s was sort of my heyday, I guess, if you like. Um, that was when I was... Uh, being able to train and, and actually try and do well in that particular event. And um, so I did that through the 90s and, and broke the record in 94 and 97 and held that through to 2018. Um, and then uh, I kind of went in 2002, I started the Australian Ocean Racing Series in, uh, in Australia. And that sort of sapped a lot of the drive for me to actually compete myself so whilst i was still doing the events and, and still doing pretty good i i i wasn't sort of focusing on the events from a racing perspective i was focusing on the events from an organizational perspective and i think doing the hard yards then has helped grow the whole sport and, and turn it into what it is now where it's you know it's a it's a it's a pretty decent sized sport now with groups all over the country and um uh, you know, it's, so I'm glad that I made that decision then because, uh, you know, how many Molokais do you really need to win? But um, I would have liked, I would have liked to got ten. That would have been nice. 